Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Shomo Chakravarti. He's joining us here to talk about Janssen reporting positive phase 3 Tremphia data in patients with difficult-to-treat psoriatic arthritis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Chakravarti. Thanks very much, Neil, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, if you would give us a a bit of your uh, professional background and talk about your role at Janssen. I'd be more than happy to, Neil. Thank you. Uh, So I'm a rheumatologist by training. I've been with Janssen for a little over five years, and my current role is that of Senior Director and Strategic Lead for the Rheumatology Therapeutic Area uh, for the uh, Janssen um, Pharmaceutical Company. Uh, and as part of my role, uh, it's an opportunity to, you know, work with partners across the organization, including our uh, research and development partners, uh, when it comes to data releases like this from uh, some of our key uh, phase three and phase four studies. Uh, and I'll add that as part of, you know, our um, mission at Janssen, and as we talk about our data, this will, you know, come to life. You know, we're really uh, in um, a very exciting time uh, with respect to uh, immune-mediated diseases, right? There's a tremendous amount of scientific and clinical advances that are being made, and at the same time, a tremendous amount of unmet need. And that's really where Janssen's focus of relentlessly advancing care comes in. And this is what we have been laser focused on uh, and predicated off of strong science. And that's what we'll talk about a little bit with the Cosmos data results. Uh, but this is part of what we uh, intend on being able to bring to our patients and their providers in terms of not only the science, but that whole process of collaboration with the healthcare community and really advocating for the best possible outcomes for patients and their healthcare providers at the end of the day. Now, I mentioned uh, phase three from FIA uh, data. Uh, this data was published in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases. It demonstrated that there were improvements in joint and skin symptoms in patients with difficult to treat psoriatic arthritis. Uh, give us a brief look into what psoriatic arthritis is and uh, share an overview of the data that was published in ART, if you would. Absolutely, and you're happy to do that. So psoriatic arthritis is a complex heterogeneous disease. Um, it is complex because its symptoms can manifest uh, in different ways. Uh, these are called domains of disease, uh, and that can involve peripheral joint pain and inflammation, soft tissue inflammation, what we call enthesitis, bacteritis. Enthesitis is inflammation of a tissue called entheses that insert into bone, bactylitis is the overall soft tissue inflammation around the joint. That can also involve more stiffness, fatigue, um, obviously skin involvement from the psoriasis component. And so, of course, this is, um, as I said, a um, heterogeneous uh, collection of manifestations that lead to psoriatic arthritis. And that's part of the challenge in terms of being able to recognize patients early enough uh, in their disease course and be able to make a diagnosis. Uh, up to 30% of patients with psoriasis will also go on to develop psoriatic arthritis. And the important element you know, to bring out here is that patients with active psoriatic arthritis don't always respond to their initial therapy. And in this particular instance, as we're talking about the Cosmos data, a lot of patients may not respond necessarily adequately to a TNF inhibitor. And so those patients that have been trialed on a TNF inhibitor and are still having an inadequate response uh, or intolerance to it, makes this patient population a more refractory, more challenging population to treat, and that's where data um, such as the Cosmos data uh, can be very impactful. Were you particularly pleased with the results after you explained to us what those results were? Well, let me go through um, some of the results from Cosmos, and I'll say that with respect to, as you mentioned before, the data from Cosmos in terms of efficacy and safety did demonstrate a significantly higher proportion of patients treated with Trinquia had improvements in their joint signs and symptoms as assessed by the ACR20 response, as well as complete skin clearance, which was assessed um, using IGA01 um, uh, uh, and then the IGA0 
which is an investigative global assessment. Uh, and in addition to those elements that I just mentioned, there were other uh, improvements that were observed in terms of physical function, health-related quality of life, and fatigue. The safety profile was also consistent with what we've observed in other uh, studies of TRIMFI in psoriatic arthritis, as well as our long-term data in psoriasis. So I would say all in all that the Cosmos data uh, were positive based on um, the findings that I just articulated. Were there any findings that uh, concerned or could potentially concern you or patients? The data from the Cosmos study, as I mentioned, across these different domains, be it the joint symptom improvement as observed with the HR20 response, the skin improvement observed with the IgA response, the POSI, physical function, quality of life, fatigue, all represent, I think, improvements across the various domains of psoriatic arthritis. Mm -hmm in addition to the safety profile. So again, I think it's um, very consistent with what we've seen in our prior studies with Trimphia in psoriatic arthritis. And again, provides you know, patients at the end of the day and their healthcare providers some very uh, impactful data, I think, with respect to uh, the efficacy and safety of Trimphia in this uh, harder to treat patient population. How long were these harder-to-treat patients uh, engaged in this study? So the primary endpoint of the study was at week 24, and this um, study did go through uh, week um, 48 in terms of efficacy assessments and then safety assessments to week 56. But again, the primary endpoint, which was positive for the COSPO study, was at week 24. Was there any consideration to pass that uh, period for patients? Well, absolutely, and I think that's um, part of uh, study, the study design for Cosmos as well as our prior studies that we've done with respect to Trimphia and psoriatic arthritis where you have your primary endpoint, your placebo-controlled period through week 24, but then you have uh, long-term data generated beyond that. And so in this case, we did actually have data not only at our primary endpoint, but then through week 48, um, for efficacy and week 56 for safety. Uh, and I think that that is uh, important, you know, to be able to reflect um, the long-term durability of response uh, to Trimphia in these uh, PNF and adequate responder thoriatic arthritis patients. Was there anything that you'd like to add briefly? Well, again, Neil, thank you for this opportunity. I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, what I would add is that I think the Cosmos data are part of a portfolio of, of um, uh, studies that Janssen has been engaged in to really, uh, again, reinforce our commitment to uh, the um, base of psoriatic arthritis. And uh, this ties back to my theme around the mission of Janssen really being to relentlessly advance care through uh, strong science, through generation of new evidence um, for our uh, on-market therapies, and in addition to the science, working really with providers and um, others in the healthcare community um, to advocate for that relationship at the end of the day. Uh, in addition to what we've talked about today with respect to Cosmos, we have an additional four clinical trials in psoriatic arthritis um, that are um, you know, posted on clinicaltrials.club that are actively recruiting in psoriatic arthritis, looking at, um, again, different patient populations like axial disease and psoriatic arthritis or looking at structural damage and psoriatic arthritis uh, and so on. And I think it's, again, just reflective of Janssen's commitment in this space. Well, Doctor, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll uh, get an opportunity to speak in the future. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Shomo Chakravarti. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 